This nexus of the Silk Road enchanted Byron and the Sufi poet Rumi, who called Herat the Pearl of Khorasan. 2,300 years ago, the army of Alexander the Great occupied Herat. Now, an army of Afghans is leaving from here for Greece. Herat, close to the frontier with Iran, is under Afghan government control, but the Taliban are all around it. In dead of night, those who've converged here from all across this country emerge into the headlights of long-distance buses. The nightly Afghan Euro caravan is leaving. So this is the place that this epic journey starts for most Afghans heading west towards Europe. For some, it'll be a long, long march through 9, 10, 12 different countries. For others, it'll end in deportation, and for others still, in tragedy, in upturned boats or in claustrophobic suffocation in the backs of trucks. They'll take these buses nine hours into Nimroz province, where they will then cross the border illegally and trudge across the desert. Where are you heading? Uh, I'm going to Iran from Iran, then I'm going to Europe. Do you know where in Europe you want Could to you go? Alman. Germany. Germany. Javed said the insecurity meant there were no jobs. There's nothing here, he said. We're leaving. It, it, it's a very big risk, uh, Javed. It's a very big risk to go on this big journey. Are you, are you sure you want to take this risk? Other Afghans have made it, he told me. Now it's our turn. But those who flee are prey to smugglers. All are fleeced. And for some, escape from Afghanistan proves fatal. A little boy called Sibgatullah sings from the Quran, a prayer for the dead. Sarosh and his son Mustafa are survivors. He laid his sister-in-law to rest here, having paid 4,000 euros to bring her body back from Greece. Last October, he and his family, along with his brother and his whole family too, had joined the Euro caravan. The Taliban had tried to kill his brother Nabi many times. Finally, the brothers sold up and boarded the midnight bus to Nimroz. We headed to Nimroz because we were going illegally. From Nimroz through Iran was tough. I've never experienced anything like it. But while sneaking into Turkey, Sorosha's family was caught and deported. His brother's family made it through and for the next 16 days journeyed across Turkey. On the 28th of October, my brother called me and said, we're waiting to get on a boat to Greece tonight. I begged him not to go by boat. So when he said this, I got a really bad feeling. That was the last time I ever spoke to him. Pictures of the sinking made headlines around the world. After they set off, I tried calling him all night. Next morning, I phoned the smuggler. He said there'd been an incident with the boat off Lesbos. He told me they'd been rescued and would be in custody for three weeks, so it'd be out of contact. After two weeks, I got worried. I couldn't wait any longer, so we started searching online. A video clip came up which said 242 people had been rescued and 15 had drowned. Then I found a photo of a body on a beach, and when I zoomed in, I realized it was my brother. Sorosh went to Greece. This time, though, he had a visa. Greek TV featured his tragic story. Nabi had been buried in the Lesbos graveyard, filled with others whose odysseys had ended.
Soroche filmed this himself at Nabi's grave. <laughs> may your soul rest in peace and may you be in paradise, he says. <laughs> His brother's wife was in the morgue, but the four children were all still missing. DNA tests were soon to confirm they'd all drowned too, and been buried in unnamed graves. My brother was such a lovely person. Everyone around here who knew him, when they think of him, they cry. I was young when I lost my father, but I didn't feel like an orphan because I had my older brother. Now I do. What is your advice to fellow Afghans contemplating leaving for Europe? If those who decide to leave don't have a really serious problem here, they're making a big mistake. But those who have made up their minds have made up their minds. There are 2,000 inmates in Herat jail, convicted Taliban, kidnappers, murderers, thieves and people smugglers. Smugglers who've gambled with other people's lives, raking in vast sums on the back of broken promises and shattered dreams. Do you accept that you have sent some of your fellow countrymen to their deaths crossing into Europe? I was a farmer. Where's the proof that I was a smuggler? I hate human smuggling. I've lived a good life and done nothing that would bring a bad name to my country. Abdul Rahim insisted he was innocent and told us three different stories in as many minutes. Of course, it's natural that a criminal will not accept his conviction. Human smugglers are taking people to their deaths. They are fooling them. They are endangering the lives of our young people, of families, and killing them. Some he sent were drowned. They were in a boat. This was a very serious crime. In downtown Herat, there are lots of pop-up junk shops where people planning to escape a country which they feel has no future sell their worldly goods before they go. As a trading crossroads of the ancient world, Herat was once the place to come, to buy, to sell, to be. Now, everyone is leaving life in Afghanistan, as precarious as the city's historic mud-brick minarets, once bejeweled, now crumbling. Thank <laughs> you.